What's up dudes, it's Goblins. And as of today, I'm gonna finally start the series of videos that I wanted to talk about controller preference and UI in general. Because with Final Fantasy XIV, there's so many different ways to play the game. You can play with a keypad, you can play with a controller, or you can play with a keyboard and mouse. So because there's so many different ways to play Final Fantasy XIV across both consoles, which are currently PS4 and PC, I wanted to talk to you guys about setting it up efficiently in whatever controller you choose to be proficient in. So this video is gonna be me tearing down my entire UI and rebuilding it in whatever controller preference we have in the game, which like almost breaks my heart a bit because I spent a lot of time like developing my UI and getting used to it and whatnot, but I'm going to save it. So it's OK. It's not a huge deal. Maybe I'll even get like my own. Maybe I'll even get something out of it. You know, maybe I'll rebuild my UI and it'll be like even more like beautiful than it was before. So maybe it's not all that bad, but I'm going to back up my UI just to be safe. And just in case you guys don't know how to do that already, all you have to do is log in and you see this little like cog wheel type character thingy over here. If you click that, you can actually back up your save to the cloud basically and then re-download it however many times you want to. It also works cross-platform, which is great. So what I'll do is I'll build my UIs and everything on PC and then go over to my PS4, test it out, make sure it's cool and it works and it makes sense um, and that I'm proficient with those keybinds and whatnot and I can just switch back and forth whenever I want to. So I use basically one, like, one HUD layout that saves everything to it and then you just flip the switch on controller or keyboard and it's good to go. So in case again, you don't know how to do this, you hit under I understand, proceed. I'm gonna upload my UI, which I built on Windows as it tells you right there. Hit okay, it uploads my backup data. And if I wanted to, I can go back and re-download it if I felt like I you know, broke anything or wanted to fix something and whatnot. So always handy to have whenever you're fiddling with this kind of stuff, because you never know when you're gonna break something and you're gonna be like, wow, I wish I was only a few steps behind rather than redoing the whole thing. All right, so before I logged off, I picked a very comfortable spot to do UI on, you know? I always say like, find somewhere that has cool in-game music or something, because you're probably gonna be here for about an hour or so, or, uh, you know, mute the music, turn on your own music and whatnot. So I, I figured this would be a nice cozy spot to uh, do the thing on, because it just, you know, it just, it just felt appropriate, so yeah. So for those of you guys that don't know, I I originally started playing Final Fantasy 14 on PS3. I have the original Realm Reborn Collector's Edition and everything. Actually, I go get it. Oh my god. I grabbed your OG 1.0 Final Fantasy 14 Collector's Edition. This is obviously like pre a Realm Reborn. But the one I'm referring to is this big old boy. Look at this. It's a, it's a guy kind of beat it up a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. It survived a couple moves at this point, so it's a little it's a little rugged. But the original OG, A Realm Reborn PS3 Collector's Edition. This is where I started. I actually remember starting on PS3 and then being like, wow, I really don't like this. <laughs> I actually think I got to like level 30 and then I started back up again when it came up for PS4, I remember. <laughs> it's so wild. So anyways, so I was playing controller which again, I really do enjoy. And we will talk about that in a different video. But I remember around the time that Heaven's Word came out, I actually got into PC gaming and I was able to afford a computer that could actually run Final Fantasy 14 in Heaven's Word. So I switched entirely to keyboard and mouse. All I used was like a regular, just a regular old mouse. Mind you, I use this mouse for first person shooters, but the whole intent is that it has two mouse buttons. We will need those. And then a keyboard. Uh, at the time I probably had a full keyboard, but you get the idea. This is my keyboard that I use now. This is the one I use a Ducky Mini 2. But that's when I really transitioned, I remember, because I also switched from being Scholar all the way through Realm Reborn to then playing Dark Knight, which had like just come out. And Dark Knight, I, I played Dark Knight literally until like now. <laughs> I played Dark Knight since it first came out, basically. But anyways, you don't want to hear me drone on about things. So what I'm going to do, HUD layout. As you guys can see, this is my current layout and everything. I'm going to just default all. We're just going to go ahead, default all and. OK, so I think I have things as default as defaults going to be. Right. So now that I have everything to as default as I could possibly make it at this point, I'm going to start switching things around and applying things to Dark Knight. I'll try and dabble and talk about other classes in particular, uh, how I played them and whatnot after I set up the whole UI afterwards. So a couple quick disclaimers if you're new here. First off, I have tattoos on my hands. You're going to see those in the hand cam. I hope that's OK. You can ask me about them later. I get asked about them all the time. People have made Shimagami Tensai references to them, Avatar references to them. I think they're all cool. So I'm down for that. Second all, whatever I I do with my UI will not be a direct reflection of what you choose to do with your UI and that's okay. I find when I make videos like this, people will like come in and objectively be like, you are wrong. And I'm like, dude, like it's okay. You could do things the way you want to. I'm just giving you guys the lowdown on how I do things so that you can take my knowledge and experience with Final Fantasy 14 and apply it to 
whatever your knowledge and experience is in Final Fantasy XIV and whatever suits your needs and what feels comfortable. I will always say whenever you change your keybinds and your UI and everything, it always takes a little bit of getting used to, or even if you change controller preference as well, there's always a level of like, it takes time to get used to the thing after you do the stuff. So do the stuff and then get used to the thing so you can do more things, you know? So that being said, let's get started. So as you guys can see, we have the very traditional sort of MMORPG setup here, two bars, one through equals, and then control one through equals as well for a second bar. And this is the way that the standard HUD sort of looks like as you start. So I'm gonna go into HUD layout and we're gonna start banging this out already. I also wanna add that when you choose to do your UI and your keybinds as well, it's gonna take you about an hour or two. So be sure to sit down and like really dig into it. And once you do it, you're set, like you're good. After you do the thing, you won't do the thing until you feel like you need to do the thing again. And like, AI, once you have a good layout, you'll never want to change it, basically. So something that you take more time on or a couple of hours on to put together will make all the difference for your experience playing the game. So I'm going to go into my HUD layout first, and I'm going to start moving things around. Now, the way I'm going to set up my keyboard here is I'm going to set it up so it's one, two, three, four, five, and then Q, E, R, T, Y for my actions. The reason I do this is because if I have actions at the end of my keyboard here that are on my minus and equals, I'm not really gonna wanna make that stretch. Anything past six is a little bit too much for me, right? If I'm moving around with WASD and then I choose, oh, I have a spell on six or I have a spell on seven or an eight, then you can do that. Of course, you could always get an MMO mouse as well, which I will talk about at some point. But if I'm just using keyboard, I would use it one, two, three, four, five, and then QERTY because that's about as far as I'd like to stretch my fingers, to be honest with you. And like QERTY are sort of the immediate buttons that I have at my disposal with one, two, three, Three, four, five, right above it as well. Each row is gonna do a different thing for me, basically. Of course, you have WASD to move around as well. I believe that we have Q and E for strafe. Yeah, we do. Okay, so we're also gonna change that a bit around as well. So, so with that in mind, I'm gonna start only making my hotbar to cater to one, two, three, four, five, and then Q E R T Y. No W, no ASD, because we use those buttons to move. Of course, strafing is very important as well. But we're gonna move our strafe buttons that are Q and E to A and D. And the reason we do that, the reason I like to do that at least, is because if you just use A and D, it just turns the camera, right? And if we hold say like S and A, then we're just turning the camera backwards as well. It's like we're driving. It's like sort of like tank controls in a sense, I guess, right? It's not really that comfortable. Whereas Q and E are full speed and they just walk back and forth. So instead of having A as roll around and then D as sort of twist around as well and you mix it with S and A and you do this weird sort of backpedal thing, instead of that, we're just gonna make strafe A and D. So I'm just gonna start by doing that. I'm not gonna dig too much into keybinds, but I do wanna free up those keybinds for later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the thing really quick. So strafe left, A, boom. Strafe right, click that, D, boom. So now, a and D do this rather than the whole twisting and turning. A and D actually do what I want them to do, what feels comfortable. W obviously, obviously goes forward. And if you're confused about movement, I personally hold right click often. I hold right click because that's basically my steering. And then I use the mouse to like look around and whatnot. So I would say don't use A and D primarily to move. Use them when you have to, of course. But the way that I personally steer is, is I hold right click and then I hold W and then I steer as well. And then you'll see I also use A and D, but I could just steer my whole character just holding W and holding right click and moving around, right? So that's out of the way. So when you first look at your HUD here, it's a little confusing. It's almost a little daunting, I would argue, you know? It's a, it's a little much, I would say. But there's a few things we don't really need if we're using a keyboard and mouse setup. So you can move this cross hotbar entirely off if you wanted to, or you could keep it here if you choose to play on a controller, which we'll get into later on, because you can do overlapping uh, HUD layouts and then just flip the switch to choose if you're playing controller or keyboard off the one HUD layout, like I mentioned earlier. But for now, I'm just going to move it out of the way so it's not too confusing. And now we're left with hotbar one and two. Anything that's blued out like this means that it's actually not active. You're not going to see it on the actual screen at all. So if something has the blue text, it means that it's not actually going to show when you're playing the game. So the first thing you're going to want to do with your hotbars is you can see this little UI element cog wheel here. You can actually click this and set it so that it's I don't know, six by two or four by three or whatever else. So you can make like side hot bars and whatnot, or you can make like two by six hot bars, whatever works for you in particular. I'm going to do six by two because what I can do here, if we're only using Q, W, E, R, T, Y and one, two, three, four, five, it actually fits perfectly into this box here, right? 
So I'll save the hotbar one. As you might know, there's also a lot of actions in Final Fantasy 14. So we're going to need at least one more hotbar, if not three total, right? So I'm going to go into hotbar two and do the exact same thing. Make it six by two. And I'm going to put it right sort of next here. I'm going to actually put it right kind of next to the uh, hotbar one. Also, if you're having troubles with snapping things into the right place or lining hotbars up, I believe you can hold shift and it'll actually lock and snap to grid. So that's super helpful for stuff. So I can actually snap these to the grid. And now they line up because I'm holding shift when I do that. Holding shift, snap to grid, letting go. It's just free roam. I remember being so frustrated when I couldn't get things like the exact pixel to line up with things. And then I realized I could just hold shift and I was like, oh yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's awesome. Perfect. And I know because I've played this game before that I'm probably going to want a hop bar three as well. So hop bar three, I'm going to turn it on six by two as well. I'm going to activate it because if you don't click this little box here, you're not going to see it at all. We're going to put that over here. Oh, and it's already got stuff on it. Nice. Hop bar four, five and six. You can do whatever you want with them. Um, I actually personally, I'm going to do it right now as well. I'm going to set hot bar four. I'm going to flip that on. I'm going to set hot bar four to a two by six bar. And this can be like on the side and I'll figure out what I want to do with it later. Same with like hot bar five. I could do another sort of side hot bar and I might do that. But for now, I'll just I'll just keep it like that. These extra hot bars, I can sort of move out of the way or bunch them together because I'm not really going to use them. I just want to clean things up when I'm actually doing the HUD layout. So I'll just like put those to the side for now until we need them. That is until we need them. So as you can see, we have a general hot bar layout now that I can actually work with and start shaping and shifting and whatnot. And with these three hot bars, we can build the rest of our UI layout around it as well. But this is our base. This is what we start with is the actual buttons and the things that you're looking at when you want to click those buttons. I should also mention while we're here, inside the UI editor, instead of going in here and then like clicking this and then like clicking UI settings and I don't know, switching it to be a bigger size by like 140%, instead of like going through the extra steps, you can actually just click control home. Now don't mind me, I have control home bound to a key on my keypad. Uh, I don't have a home button on this mini keyboard, which is fine. I don't really need it, I don't think. But if you tap control home, you can actually resize things just by doing that. This also works with your general inventory or other sort of windows in game. You just hit control home and you can automatically resize things. So like even the minimap, for example, I could like resize that if I'm just tapping control home. And again, just easy, just like, you know, boom, boom, boom. You could just do the thing. Okay, so now we're gonna go into our key binds because we have the general skeleton of what our UI is gonna look like and our buttons look like. And I'm gonna go over to hotbar. Now remember that hotbar one is this guy over here and we're gonna start with that one. Now the way that I like to set things up is I like to have a visual reference. If I see what it looks like in front of me on my screen and it reflects what it's gonna look like on my keyboard, then I can translate that very quickly in my head. Rather than having just the full bar, one through equals, and then me trying to assign key binds to something that's like, say on equals or minus, say I wanted to assign like alt control or control one or something like that. That wouldn't translate visually for me. That's why I'm showing you guys how I do it because I think it's really helpful to have a visual, even if you don't look at your keyboard or your mouse at all, but to see the translation on screen. I know it helps me a lot and it helped me a lot as a new player. And I think it could really benefit other people. Other than people that have played MMOs for a very long time. I find people that have played MMOs for a very long time will have this 12 sort of keybind layout or whatever on their HUD and they can just memorize. Oh, yeah, like I have like this half on control, basically, and they're good to go. I can't I don't work like that, unfortunately. I, I can't think that way. So so that being said, I'm going to assign things and make it reflect how it would look on keyboard. Right. So like I said, on our hotbars, we're only going to have skills one through five and then Q E R T Y. I'm going to exclude the six and I'm going to hit right click to clear it entirely because while having it there, there. Again, it is too far of a stretch for when you're actually going to click an action. I don't know if you guys can see that, but if you're on WASD and moving around and then you have to click six to hit an action, it's just a tad too far, in my personal opinion. Again, you might have longer fingers than my, I, mean, I, I, I don't know, but it doesn't really translate well for me. So I'm just going to clear that one entirely. Then seven, eight, nine is our lower bar here. And like I said, I want that visual translation. So we're going to switch it to Q, E, R, T, and Y. You'll obviously lose some actions in setting up these hot bars. It's just good to go back through your keybinds afterwards and then reassign those keybinds to other keys you're comfortable with, such as auto run, as you guys saw when we clicked R. 
uh, and set that up that way. So we will rebind that later on at some point as well. And then same thing with equals. I don't want it on this bar. It's just sort of sitting there. I'm just going to right click and, and clear it entirely. So we got rid of that. Now our second bar. This is a personal preference again. So our second bar here is control one, two, three, four, five, six. Control seven, eight, nine, zero minus equals. So what I'm going to do is make it so that is not control. I'm personally going to change control modifier to an alt modifier. And the reason I do this is because for me, I don't like hitting control and then one. It feels cumbersome. It feels weird when I'm using my pinky to hit control. So I do one. So it's like control one, two, three, four, five, six for that modifier. Instead of that, because I'm not jumping around, I'm going to make alt the modifier because alt is just a thumb movement. See, I can jump with my thumb. As you guys know, jump is thumb, but I'm not always going to have to jump. Actually, quite often, I'm not going to have to jump. So therefore, I can just hit alt. That's going to be my modifier. It's just easy and it's a very similar movement. And I have full range over the five keys that I assigned on QERTY and five as well. It's just all encompassing. I can just, ah, oh, I just, blah, blah. so our control modifier is going to become a alt modifier. And then everything I have that's one through equals again, I'm going to change it to QRTY. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So alt one, alt two, alt three, alt four, alt five. Nice. We're going to clear control six. And then on the second half of the bar, because again, we're at C7. So control seven, I'm going to do alt Q, alt E, alt R, alt T and alt Y. And then clear control equals. Now. Alt Y is also a bit of a stretch. As you guys can see, when I hit Alt Y, it's a bit of a stretch. If I do it with my index, it's not so bad. You can assign a, an ability to Alt Y and Alt 5 that you very rarely use or has a long cooldown, and you can still hit them. And they're just very accessible. They're a bit of a stretch, right? But it's not too far comparatively to, you know, letting go of everything and then tapping six or seven, right? Or equals or control, control seven. Look at this big stretch. Control eight even. Oh, control nine. Uh, you know, it's not that bad. It's not as hard. And then we have a little lone hop bar three all the way over here. Now, I remember what I used to do on keyboard and mouse is I would assign my mouse buttons to these two right here. So that would be hop bar slot one and then hop bar slot seven on hop bar three. I would apply my mouse buttons. So I'm going to do that as well. So slot one here for mouse five, which is the top of the mouse, so like the top button that I'm clicking here. And then hop bar three slot seven, I'm going to do that bottom button right here. Boom, there you go. Another way I've seen people do things, they've assigned their modifiers to their mouse buttons, which isn't a bad idea as well. I just know that it requires a little bit more tinkering because you have to like change this button so it means alt and then this would be an alt modifier or like a shift modifier here. So that would require you to do it from your computer or your keyboard if you had like a macro for it or whatnot. So for now, I'm going to use them as actionable buttons, actionable buttons that I can like click really fast or hit in case danger happens or like longer cooldowns that I do want up all the time that I want to have super accessible from the comfort of my thumb. I'm going to do that there. And then on hop bar three, we have these leftover buttons here. So I'm going to assign, uh, I think, shift modifiers to them. And the reason I do a shift modifier rather than a control modifier is because, again, it is easier to reach in general. I'm going to show you guys that again, shift modifier rather than control. My pinky is relieved of, of, of control and I can do one, two, three, four, five. Q E R T Y again, rather than the long stretch that is control when I'm clicking buttons. I can hit shift one, two, three, four, five, Q, E, R, T, Y, shift. That's just easier to hit with my pinky in general than the control modifier. So I'm going to use shift instead. You guys, if you're comfortable with using control as a modifier, keep it that way. That works for you. That's the way it should be. Whatever works for you is probably what's going to work going forward. But if there's a way that you can optimize and make things more efficient, you should always. And I feel like for me, control is not efficient. Shift is though. Alt definitely is. So. That's why I do things the way I do. So hop bar three slot two, I'm going to make shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four. And then the other half, I'm going to make shift Q, shift E, shift R and shift T. Shift T is also target enemy attacking you. Again, you're going to want to reassign that at some point if you so please. Entirely up to you if you'd like. And we go apply. Nice. OK, so I fast forwarded things a little bit to save you guys the headache, basically, of me debating like where do I want my buttons and like how I want to work things out and whatnot. And everything has changed. As you can see, I have all my abilities slotted. I'm going to explain my reasoning for each one. So 
this is going to be like the tank setup, I'd call it, because tanks have a lot of overlapping abilities that you'll find that are very similar, but function differently. And before I talk more about it, because I was just about to, what I'm going to do is make it so that these hotbar is a little more cleaned up as well. So I'm going to go into character configuration. I'm going to find hotbar, which is right here on the menu. I'm going to click hide unassigned slots so we don't have any blank slots sitting there. And I'm also going to unclick display hotbar numbers so we don't have those numbers on them anymore because we're not cycling hotbars. Some of you guys might cycle, cycle hotbars. I know PC players that have done that. I have never experimented that much with it because I have a certain way that I like to play. Um, but if that works for you, obviously you're going to want to have those hotbar numbers on, right? But for me, this is the current setup that I use. So one, two, three, four, five here are like my most basic of basic attacks. So like one, this is like my basic rotation. My basic ro combo rotation, I can also put my insta in there, you know, mix it up. So, because as you can see, Edge of Shadow and Flood of Shadow are both instant attacks, but they waste mana, right? Lots of damage, but the mana cost is very expensive. So, that's how that functions. My bottom half here of Hotbar 1 is my aggro abilities. So I like aggro, and then if I was AoE, I could do that. And if you have your second AoE, you can Stalwart Soul or uh, whatever the Warrior one or Paladin one is, for example. Can't remember the, what the button is. And then you could do your ranged AoE attack, for example, provoke on Y, provoke on Y so that it's accessible, but also not in the way, because I only know I have to click it so many times for like those, those moments that I have to click them, right? On the second half of my hotbar, I have more of my attacks and my stuns. So I always have low blow on, on this one, which is Alt Q. So I can stun my enemies easily with a quick alt Q, it's just a quick modifier. And then I've got Carbon Spit here for mana, and I've got my Plunge here, which is super accessible, alt R. I jump, I click Carbon Spit, for example. I can hold alt 1, 2, pop some cooldowns, put an AoE down if I wanted to, alt Y for reprisal, because alt Y is a bit of a stretch, although you're not going to use it as often, especially earlier games, so. And then shift Q E R T Y. So like, that's sort of the most basic of basics for my first hot bars there. So it's not too bad. And then my last hot bar is dedicated to mouse button five and mouse button four. So if you guys play Dark Knight, you'll know that Blood Weapon is, uh, you'll want to have it up as much as you can for maximum damage on pulls and whatnot. And then Blackness Knight is just your best shield. It's an insta shield, it costs lots, but you'll want to be able to have it. So I could just have it in my mouse button. I just boom, boom. Same with Blood Weapon, boom, boom. It's on my mouse button. On the two little mouse buttons that I have, I have two of the most crucial spells that I will use in this class, right? And then Shift 1, super accessible. That's my uh, tank stance. That's my tank stance, popping grit. I just want to have it available at shift one because it's easy to click, of course. So when I do it again, I take it off and I put it back on. And then for delirium, which again is like a higher level uh, ability, of course, shift Q for that. And then I have, you know, quietus and then blood spiller on that. And those are abilities you'll use a lot more like end game too, right? Or you combo into them as you learn that as to be a dark knight, basically. Again, warrior work very similar, kind of same, same, but different. Just a different set of abilities, right? So that's just how I have it set up. Because I know that those abilities are good, but I only use them sometimes. So they're not as crucial as having them on like one, two, three, four, five on bar one. I have them on bar three as like, you know, shift Q E R T Y. So it makes more sense to me. And then living dead over here is my is like the ultimate oh shit button, as you guys know. For Dark Knight, it makes it so that I can survive 10 seconds worth of damage past one. And if I'm healed to top, then I can stay alive. But if I'm not healed to top in 10 seconds, then I die. But the reason that's all lonesome over there is because I don't ever want to risk pl clicking any other buttons. It's like a uh, gunbreaker with super bolide, but it's the same sort of idea. You want to have that button like off to the side so you don't misclick it because it's like, it'd be like misclicking like an LB or something like that. And then everyone panicking very briefly until you cancel it and then being like, oh, sorry. So you just, I have it there. It's accessible still but it's off to the side but that's basically the gist of it all of my abilities are super accessible via one two three four five and two modifiers and mouse button and like i made it in such a way like i don't have to worry about moving my hand or cramping my hand too too much when i do things right so like i can just do that it's just like super convenient and I think it's a good way of setting up keyboard and mouse in my personal opinion. Ease of access for buttons. Everything's just within range of five keys, basically. And in my opinion, it saved me a lot of learning and hand cramps and whatnot. And like I said, there's a visual. I can see, okay, what's on screen here. I can see what's on screen here and here. And I can look at my keyboard 
and I have the direct representation of what I'm looking at. Even the mouse buttons are right there on the hotbar, and I can say, okay, yeah, it's up and down. Very understandable to read. I get it. And it makes the game, in my opinion, much more approachable than having random binds set to one through equals, and you, you have like a control modifier that's like, sort of off to the right side or whatever. It just makes it easier. Now, this might look a little bit different for a Dragoon or a healer. So I'm going to try and I'm going to try and dabble a little bit to see what that looks like for DPS classes or for a healer as well. Again, it's going to look different for you guys, but I'm going to give it a go. OK, so fast forward a little bit. This is probably what a healer would look like, in my opinion. Mostly in Scholar is what I'm looking at. So you got, again, all your attacks in the top bar and one, two, three, four, five. All your most basic abilities, one, two, three, four, five. And then my AOE slam is like right here, for example. Uh, mouse five for the most obvious like Aether Flow, Aether Current. So like Scholar Summoner use your Aether Flow, I should say. And then mouse four for like the damage there. Or like if you need to use other abilities for Scholar with Aether Flow, of course, you can. So I have it set up in such a way to do so. And then obviously in the second bar for hot bar one, you know, you've got like Adlequium and like Succor, Physic. All that fun stuff. And then similar to like how I had Living Dead on Dark Knight, for example, I have Selene, my one fairy, on Shift Y. Because I know I'm only going to have to like summon her once at the beginning of, 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 of a fight, basically, or have her available. We'll move this hotbar at some point. It's, it's so obnoxious, uh, but it's there for right now. That's fine. And then like tertiary abilities like uh, Lucid Dream are also there. Chain Stratagem, Whispering Dawn and whatnot. So stuff like that and then i have a very obvious combination over here as well shift three to shift r will be my scholar res because you want to swift cast to get a quick res off and again it's everything within the, the variance of like everything being within range of clicking things now that i've shown you sort of what a healer is going to look like i can show you what a dps is going to look like maybe i'll try with dragoon that might be my next step that might be a bit of a challenge for me because i never played dragoon on keyboard and mouse even in the very beginning there so let me give it a go okay so for dragoon i tried to set it up to the best of my ability and i apologies if it's not the most amazing thing but i, I did my absolute best so i have again my basic rotation on the first bar here at the top of the bar and then anything that combos off it beneath it and around it as well dragoon works a little bit different as in like they have a lot of abilities that do combo off one another so i like to keep them it's almost like a dance you kind of have like this ddr sort of vibe with dragoon and doing the right sort of things or doing different sort of things once you have certain dots up basically and then piercing talent is like your javelin throw i just figured i could assign it to alt one because one is sort of the starter of my combo anyways so like i'm not going to be using that a ton anyways so it's handy to have there and have available to like pull in things but otherwise you don't really need it a ton so that's why it doesn't go to like the main bar all my jumps are on my alt because they have a longer cooldown comparatively to the first bar and then everything on the third bar here mouse button five is ball of the dragon which has a relatively small cooldown but is good for granting further combos and extra damage and whatnot and then of course elusive jump on mouse button four right which is the bottom the bottom bu button bump so I can fight things with a lot of ease, use my basic sort of combos and whatnot, which is pretty neat. Get my buffs on, get some dives in there. Man, Dragoon is such a fun class. It's a very cool class. So again, there's a couple things that I would change in this layout as is, but this is like relatively not bad for me and what, I, what I'm doing and whatnot. So it works relatively well. And I can kind of understand what's going on in my combos and everything. So oh, I should probably pop out of the dragon because it's something that you should probably have on most of the time and then try and keep up as much as I possibly can because that's what you gotta do dra with Dragoon. You gotta have, the, gotta have that juicy, that delicious uptime. You just gotta, you know? Ah, oh. I don't even remember how to play this class very well. <laughs> I don't remember how to play this class very well, but you get the idea, right? You get the idea. <laughs> so that's some variation between tank, DPS, and healer that you guys can do and set up equally as much or similar to how I have it set up on keyboard and mouse. The biggest thing is if you're comfortable with one thing on one class and how it's set up, you'll be comfortable with the same or similar on other classes and how you set up those classes. So for example, I see that on Dark Knight, I have arm's length here, which is a crossover ability to a few other classes. So I go back to my Dragoon here. Oh, sorry. I go back to my Dragoon here and I would make arm's length on the same ability. I think that's on the same slot, right? So there's some crossover there, right? And then obviously my basic rotation still, still seems relatively similar on just like one, two, three, four, five and QRTY. 
and then so on and so forth. And I even still have a stun that is AQ. My stun is always AQ, just because I'm familiar with it, and it feels comfortable for me. So across all my classes, I try and keep my stuns or my interjects even or whatever, all at like a very similar level basically, right? So just because it makes sense for me. And there's a lot of crossover with other classes. And I forgot to mention one other very important thing, and that's a sprint button. Please bar your sprint button. Sprint is so important in this game, oh my god. So I think what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna shift everything over. Put my sprint here on my bar for shift one because it's a reasonable button, of course. And you know what, I can make it even better and just change these around. So that shift Q is my sprint. Yeah, that feels pretty good. I like that. And then instead I have my delirium combos of top plus living shadow and whatnot. So that's pretty good, I like that. Uh, mind you, you could put it anywhere else. I do recommend keeping your, your sprint button somewhere where it's extremely accessible because it's a very common button for you to press in fights or even like while you're out and about doing stuff and whatnot. It's just handy to have it somewhere accessible because you know you're gonna need it. It's such an important button. And like I said, you can keep it universal too, which is awesome. So if I have sprint on shift Q on this class, you bet I'm gonna have shift Q sprint on every other class. So this video feels like it's gone on long enough. That being said, I'm not gonna talk about HUD layout specifically in this video, but I will talk about it in the few coming videos after I finish this series about keybinds and setting yourself up comfortably to play the game. Because HUD is extremely important. Hold on. Excuse me, sir. I'm like a little bit busy right now. Do you, uh, do you mind? Like, what is you doing, man? Oh, I popped, I popped the sprint. Maybe the sprint there's not great. Maybe we'll figure that out later. <laughs> All right, that's good enough. Let me just walk out of these gates. Okay, so like I was saying, HUD layout is an extremely important topic. And if you've gotten this far and I don't have the video up yet to talk about HUD layout, I will tell you right now from this position onwards, now that you have your keybinds and your actions as the base, you can set up everything else around that. So set it up however you're comfortable with right now, and then we'll talk about this later. So don't worry too much about it, okay? So that is how I personally set up a comfortable hotbar system for myself using keyboard and mouse. Again, it's going to vary between people, so whatever works for you, do the thing. It's totally fair, it's totally okay. And feel free to experiment and play around with things because nothing is set in stone. You can change this stuff whenever you want to. And the more time you spend on it, getting it perfect for your comfortability, the less time you have to spend on it later, I find. So thank you guys so much for watching this guide video about how to set up keyboard and mouse, like just a basic clicky, you know, two button mouse in Final Fantasy XIV. I hope that helps some of you guys set up for your first time experiencing the game. I realize that a lot of my abilities you might not have access to quite yet if you're new to the game, but again, it's good to set up things for later when you know things are gonna get a little crazier in terms of your abilities. If you guys have any feedback or recommendations, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'm always willing to listen and check them out as well. And please share your experiences with me and how you set up your keyboard and mouse as well. So the next few videos will cover the other peripherals that you can use to play the game as well. We're talking controller, keypad, ML mouse, and then we'll talk about HUD as well so you guys get the full extent of everything I've talked about here. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, please subscribe for more, and be sure to come visit me on twitch.tv slash goblins or gobrinz.com. There's a link there or you can just go directly to my Twitch channel. So take it easy dudes, have a good one, and I'll see you online. Peace out. How, how did I forget the Sprint button. The sprint button is so important. <laughs>